The seventh commandment is thou shalt not steal. And the seventh commandment has to do with the morality uh, of, of other people's goods. And this commandment forbids the unjust taking of another person's goods. It commands justice and charity in the case of earthly goods and the fruits of men's labors. It requires respect for both the universal destination of goods and the right to private property. Christian life strives to order this world's goods to God and to fraternal charity. The Catechism teaches the reasons behind the seventh commandment in speaking about the, uh, the universal destination of goods and the importance of private property. God entrusts the goods of the earth to the common stewardship of mankind. Goods are divided up to ensure the freedom and dignity of persons, especially those threatened by poverty and violence. A natural solidarity should develop among people. The universal destination of goods is not diminished by the right to private property. One's private property is not to be held selfishly, but used for the goods of others, beginning with one's own family. Goods of production, land, factories, skills, oblige their possessors to employ them in ways that will benefit the greatest numbers. Goods for use and consumption, products, should be used in moderation and with a view to the needs of the poor. Political authority has the right and duty to regulate the legitimate exercise of the right of ownership for the sake of the common good. With the seventh commandment comes a great respect for persons and their goods. The virtues of temperance and justice must be exercised out of a respect for human dignity. The practice of solidarity with the poor befits a Christian who follows Jesus Christ, who became poor so that by his poverty you might become rich. And so when the Catechism speaks about the respect of the goods of others, the Catechism lists several violations of the Seventh Commandment. Theft is forbidden by the Seventh Commandment, usurping another's property against the reasonable will of the owner. Also forbidden by the Seventh Commandment, unjustly taking and keeping the property of others, deliberately keeping borrowed or found items, business fraud, paying unjust wages, forcing up prices by taking advantage of the ignorance or hardship of another, misappropriation of commonly held goods, work poorly done, tax evasion, forgery of checks and invoices, excessive expenses and waste, and the willful destruction of private or public property. Promises must be kept and contracts strictly observed to the extent that the commitments made in them are morally just. Commutative justice obliges strictly. Justice concerning contracts, safeguarding property rights, paying debts, and fulfilling obligations freely contracted. Without commutative justice, no other form of justice is possible. Legal justice has to do what, with what a person owes within the community. Distributive justice deals with what the community owes its citizens in proportion to their contributions and needs. One who has been taken advantage of, one from whom things have been stolen, has a right to restitution. And the person who has committed a sin against the seventh commandment must perform restitution in as far as it is possible. Restitution can take the form of the goods themselves or an equivalent in money, including the profit or advantage their owner would have legitimately obtained from them. All who in some manner have taken part in a theft or have knowingly benefited from it, those who ordered it, assisted in it, or received the stolen goods, are obliged to make restitution in proportion to their responsibility and to their share of what was stolen. Under the seventh commandment, the catechism speaks of gambling. 
Gambling is not in itself contrary to justice. However, it is morally unacceptable when someone is deprived of what is needed for his needs or the needs of another. The passion of gambling risks becoming an enslavement. Cheating at gambling is a grave matter unless the damage done is insignificant to the one harmed. The Catechism also speaks under the, uh, under the Seventh Commandment about slavery. Slavery is forbidden, for it treats persons as objects in disregard for their human dignity. And it is forbidden to use violence to reduce human beings to their productive value or to a source of profit. The Catechism will speak about the respect for the integrity of creation under the seventh commandment, the commandment that has to do with stealing, because in many ways disrespect for the integrity of creation is a th crime of theft, a sin of theft, taking what does not belong to oneself, depriving another of the use of the goods of creation. Animals, plants, and Inanimate objects are by nature destined for the common good of past, present, and future humanity. Morality obliges in the use of the goods of nature. One is obliged to use the goods of nature with concern for the quality of life of one's neighbor, including generations to come. One should have a religious respect for the integrity of creation. And the Catechism also speaks of animals, animals being creatures of God and the responsibility that we have in regard to animals. Animals are God's creatures. They bless Him and give Him glory. We should treat them with kindness. God entrusted animals to the stewardship of human beings. And the use of animals for food or clothing is permitted. The domestication of animals is permitted. Medical and scientific experimentation on animals within reason is permitted if it contributes to caring for or saving of human lives. It is contrary to human dignity to cause animals to suffer or die needlessly. It is unworthy to spend money on them that should, as a priority, go to the relief of human misery. One can love animals one should not direct to them the affection due only to persons.